The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer. I act upon the Word. And by my walking in faith, it pleases God. Therefore, God's Word is being confirmed in my life with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah and amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, to two places of Scripture. Numbers, the 14th chapter. Numbers chapter 14. And Ephesians chapter 6. Numbers chapter 14. And Ephesians chapter 6. Now tonight I'm going to be talking about boldness. Boldness. Believers in Christ Jesus have to be bold because our boldness will be rewarded. And we don't want to be timid in this day and time. It's necessary that we as believers be bold. It's necessary that we as believers reflect who we are in Christ Jesus. So everybody say this, I will be bold. I I will be strong. I will will allow the light of God, the the glory of God, God, to shine brightly brightly in my life. In In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah and amen. So we're going to look at two verses of scripture. One is in Numbers, the 14th chapter, and the other is in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, the Numbers reference, in other words, Numbers chapter 14, we see here that there's going to be an opportunity for those who have come by way of God's miraculous abilities out of Egypt into a place where they're in the wilderness. But you know something? When you're in the presence of God... The wilderness is just not that tough. Amen? In fact, it wouldn't be tough at all. It wouldn't be considered tough. Why? Because God was providing for them, feeding them, giving them water to drink, and they were eating supernatural food, angel food, manna from heaven. Amen? They had already seen the work of God operate in their lives when they were in Egypt. They all passed through the Red Sea. That was held as two walls, one on either side of them, and they walked through the pathway that was dried by the water. I mean, that was wet at one time, but the the air, the breath, as it were, the, the wind of God caused that whole area where they were going to walk to be just dry so they could walk right through there. And so now they've come through the Red Sea which is a type of baptism. They've seen the high walls of the Red Sea on both sides be held back, congealed, as it were. And they could see that this, which they were doing, was by the ability of God. The glory cloud was above them. The walls were on the side of them of the Red Sea of water. And then they were walking on dry land. Now then, what testimony should they have? Well, in Numbers, the 14th chapter, we'll look here. Verse 1. Numbers chapter 14. You there? Verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Why? Because out of 12 spies that went in to look at the land that flowed with milk and honey, 10 out of the 12 were talking in unbelief. 
10 out of the 12, which made up a majority of the natural, began to talk against the promises and take away the hope, as it were. Could I say take away? No. They began to challenge the hope that those who had faith once possessed. And those who became hopeless by listening to negative communication, those who let go of their faith and threw down their hope, were willing to side in with those that talked against what God said. Now, how do you know that the people talked against what God said? Well, God's word always produces faith and hope. Hope is a confident expectation of a better future. So if anybody starts talking to you and they just seem to try to, try to suck out your confidence, try to bring your joy down, your joy level down, trying to contain your confession to keep you from talking about how good God is, I just want you to know, those are people who are trying to be hope stealers enemies to your faith people who are not listening to the spirit of God who are they listening to they're listening to the devil and so the congregation of people had a chance to listen to the 12 spies 10 out of the 12 were talking negatively two talked positively and that was Joshua and Caleb they said let us go up at once God is pleased in us let's go take the land Hallelujah. Jacob, I mean, uh, uh, um, Caleb said, I've already got my part, my plot of land. I've already got it see, sized up. I already know where I'm going to have my dwelling place for me and my family to live. Ooh, it's a nice house. I already own the place. It's got a beautiful view. It's got plenty of water and it's got lots of minerals on it. Let's go up and take the land. I'm ready to go in. Woo, let's do it. Well, we know Joshua already, he himself was strengthened by what he knew God said. Now, verse 2 says this of Numbers chapter 14. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? Now, what kind of conversation is that? And why would they say, would God? I mean, do they really want God to hear them talk like that? They seem to think they were just trying to tell it like it is. You know, some people, they think, boy, when they're getting ready to wax, that means grow in negativity. They think they're really telling it like it is. Well, let me just tell you how I really feel. They're just talking negatively. They're, pre they're preparing people, though. we got to receive this, what I'm going to tell you, because it's really coming from a place of strong feelings. Well, the congregation heard people coming from a place of strong feelings. Only thing is that feelings are subject to change. And so just because a person says, I really feel strong, doesn't mean that they're actually accurate. It just means that they're expressing how they feel now. Look at the person to the right or left of you say, feelings change. Feelings change. But God never does. God never does. <laughs> so why don't you just stay with what God says? Don't let anybody stop you from enjoying what your father told you. <laughs> Keep listening to what God says. Yeah, the congregation and the people of the earth may be talking negative. They may be talking gloom and doom. But don't you let that bother you. Keep repeating what your daddy told you. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. It's a land that you enjoy because the promises of God are how you walk. Therefore, it's called the promised land. Why? Because you can only get into this by the promises of God. You can only enjoy this by the promises of God. So keep talking the promises of God. Now verse 3 says, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us 
unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? See, when people are getting into negative things and talking how they feel and siding in with what the devil is telling them in their mind, you know, the illogical starts sounding like it's logical to them. I mean, really, if Egypt was all that good, why didn't they just stay over there? If they weren't concerned about the well-being of their wives and children in Egypt, then why would they come out? If the hard taskmasters wasn't beating them and it felt good to be over there being beaten, why didn't they just stay there? They, they, see, they forgot why they were willing to leave. They forgot who brought them out. They forgot that the promises of God are for their good. And you know what? It's interesting how people who receive, and this is what we're talking about, in, uh, people that need, you need to be bold, people that received the benefits and the blessings now forgot to be appreciative. Do you know you got to appreciate God? And did you know that praising and worshiping God will keep you in a position where you appreciate him? Keep thanking God. Keep rejoicing and praising him. When you don't know what to do, just thank God. Hallelujah. When you want to know what to say, just say praise the Lord. Keep praising God. Why? Because your praises will keep you humble. Your praises will keep you in a position where you remember the great things he's done for you. And praising God will strengthen your faith. And, and praising God will get you prepared for the next blessings that you'll walk in. Keep praising God. Now verse 4, and they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Well, it's pretty obvious they're not talking to God, they're talking to each other. So when you want to know how things are going to come forth in the future, don't be talking to other people. Talk to God, your Father. And then, of course, you can always talk to those who are good faith, good, you know, good report, and communicate and fellowship with people of good report, people of faith. Verse 5, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly, Numbers 14, verse 5, of verse 5, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. So instead of getting into conversation with others about how, you know, negative things should be discussed, they tore their clothes. Now, what do you mean they rent or tore their clothing? Well, when a person tears their robe or clothing, they're saying, you're breaking my heart. You're trying to get me to, to be torn in my heart. And it bothers me desperately to see you do what you're doing. See, God never would agree with those that were negative. So there's a ripping away. There is a tearing away. What do you mean? Well, their unbelief won't allow them to dwell in the blessed best that God has for them and do you know you're not supposed to be hanging out with negative people Joshua and Caleb came together in faith Moses and Aaron were together in faith God was always in agreement with what he had already said so my thing is some people have said well what are you going to do now well I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to trust God's word and I'm going to get around the atmosphere of faith I'm going to get in the presence where the word is believed. Did you know that being in the presence where the word is not believed has its effect upon people? Yes. It has a damaging effect. Now looking at verse 8. Numbers 14, chapter 14, verse 8. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. 
Now notice how God is appealing to them through the word that's spoken. They're trying to appeal, Joshua and Caleb are trying to appeal to the people and let them know. Let's be reasonable in the word about this. Let's, let's reflect on what the Lord has already done. And if he's already brought us out thus far, don't you think he's going to bring us all the way? If the Lord delights in us. Now what do you mean if the Lord delights? That means don't do anything to turn him off. Keep him encouraged. Keep him aware that we're a good investment. Don't make him think that we are unappreciative. Remind him he was right in what he did when he helped us. Y'all, you do need to be conscious of how God thinks of you, don't you? Do you understand what I mean by that? Don't quench the Holy Ghost. That's another way of saying that. Don't extinguish the ability and the fervency and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Invite the presence of God in, in your midst. And God inhabits the what? The praises of his people. If you're going to talk, let's talk. But let's just talk the right way. If you want to, if you want to sing, let's sing. But let's just sing the praises of God. If you want to do some memory of the past, let's remember the past. But let's talk about the memory of what the Lord did in our past. See, you don't have to be stuck on stupid. You can be blessed. Amen? You need to write that down, put that in your notes. Don't be stuck on stupid. Amen? One minister said it this way. If you got to doubt somebody, doubt the devil. Don't doubt God. Huh. Amen? The devil says, this is what I'm going to do. He says, oh, I doubt that. Well, you're a doubter. I'm only doubting you. <laughs> I ain't doubting God. Numbers, the 14th chapter, verse 9. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. That means, you know, we're going to, aren't you hungry for what's good? Well, then let's just go in and eat. Amen. Now, he wasn't talking about cannibalism, but what he's saying is that do you feel threatened when you're dealing with bread? No, we don't be threatened by the people. For their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. See, that makes all the difference. Everybody say, the Lord, the Lord is with me. Say, since the Lord is with me, I will not fear what can man do unto me. See, the Lord is with us. Hallelujah. Say it again, the Lord is with us. Look at the person to the right or left of you and say, the Lord is with you. <laughs> Look at over somebody else say, the Lord is with you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is with us. Now then, we don't have any reason to be afraid of any situation, of any circumstance, of any blowhards. You know what I mean by blowhards? People that want to get in your face and try to tell you what they believe, contrary to what God says. Well, I have news for you. I'm not listening to anybody but the Lord. Amen. Verse 10. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. In other words, instead of getting riled up for God, they grabbed stones and looked and said, let's just, let's just get rid of Joshua and Caleb. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle. Underline or circle the word glory. The glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. See what's going on now. Now, those who stood with God, Joshua and Caleb, they were standing with God. And the people influenced by dev the devil were negative and they're trying to come against Joshua and Caleb because they're standing with God. And then what did God do? And the glory of the Lord appeared. See, when you side in with God, even if it looks like it's just you or a couple of you or a few of you, but if you stand boldly on the side of God, 
the glory of the Lord will appear. Why? Because God is going to show you to be in the right. Now, how many of you like being shown to be in the right? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Why should we be bold? Because our Father is with us. Numbers chapter 14, verse 10. Now, I remember Brother Copeland gave a, uh, an account when he was just a little boy. His dad, Copeland Sr. there, his dad was an insurance salesman. And because he was a good insurance salesman, he'd get benefits. You know, he'd get uh, some, some encouragement gifts given to him. And one encouragement gift that he was given was a cruise. So he went on the cruise. He had little Kenneth Copeland with him. And little Kenneth was there on the deck of the ship. And he saw this little disc sliding along the deck and he thought that this is going to slide out. Let me just go ahead and stop the disc and keep it from sliding off. He felt like those that were playing with these little discs, they'd appreciate it. And so when he stopped the disc, they were, they were playing shuffleboard. And so when he stopped the disc, the people were angry with him and they started to rail on him. Rail means they started to let him know what for and what how. You shouldn't be touching this disc. You shouldn't be touching our game. You're interfering with what we're doing. This is important to us and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're working him. And he's a little boy. He thought he was doing something good to stop at the disc. But yet, you see, when they're getting in his face, he's now shivering and he's shaking and he's thinking, oh, no, oh, no. They're going to eat me up and they're going to get me. And his dad... Copeland Sr. saw what was going on and he rushed over to his son and he put his son behind him and said I'll take care of this. Now little Copeland was, was shaking when those men got in his face but then when his dad spoke with his big bold voice and said I'll take care of this you stand right here by me took him and shoved him behind him. And then little Copeland, the little boy Copeland, Kenneth, said, you know what? He got a little bold then. He got bold then. Grabbed onto his dad's leg and said, yeah, I believe we can take him. In other words, we can do something about him. Now, before when he was thinking he was facing them all on his own, he was shaking. But when his dad said, you get behind me, now he got some strength, some stiffness in his backbone. Now he's, he's not shaking anymore. Now he's ready to, you know, straighten out his neck. And he's ready to throw off his cuffs. Fist to cuffs. Why? Because he knows between him and his dad, they'll whip him. <laughs> and what I'm saying to you is that your daddy's with you. He's with you. You don't have any reason to be afraid of anybody about anything at all. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but what? Power and love and a sound mind. Now remember the people of Israel in Numbers, the 14th chapter, they were, they were speaking negatively. They were talking bad. They were talking against God and they were talking against Moses and Aaron. And then they talked against what? Joshua and Caleb. And then because Joshua and Caleb were on the side of God, the people decide, let's let everybody get some stones. We're going we're gonna to stop them from talking so bold. And when they gathered their stones, daddy showed up. <laughs> the glory of the Lord appeared. Why? Because daddy knows how to protect those who will stand up for him. He'll stand up for you. Don't you let go of your boldness. Keep your boldness. Amen? Amen. Remain confident, even in the face of opposition. When people are asking you, why are you smiling when everything else seems to be going another direction? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to be bold for the Lord. Now, let's read on Numbers chapter 14. We're getting to my foundational text here. We're getting to it. Verse 9. 
Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defenses departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. God says, I'm going to turn them all into crispy critters. I'm toasting them all. I don't have to put up with this. In other words, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Caleb, y'all stand over here. I got you. I'm getting ready to do something right here. I'm going to flex. But why? And God, God put forth his what? He put forth his reason. All that that I've done for them and they saw my power and might, they saw the devastation of Egypt. Even if they wanted to go back there, they couldn't even go back to their houses. They couldn't go back to farming like they used to. They couldn't go back to making straws for new buildings. They couldn't go back to having a, a, a lifestyle that they used to have anymore. Why? Because Ish, Ish, uh, Egypt was decimated. Decimated. Now verse 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them, by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. In other words, Lord, they're talking about your presence and your glory. You got a reputation. They know that you're backing up your people. And so if you destroy these people, they'll say, well, God can't pull off what he started. I don't want that to be said of you, O oh Lord. Did you all know that the way people have attitude toward you because you're trusting God is the attitude they have toward God that means when you're trusting God you're representing God so if somebody says well you can't do it God can't pull you through then you tell them just hide and watch because God will do exactly what he said in my life Verse 15, Numbers, the 14th chapter, verse 15. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means, what? Clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I pray, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy according unto the greatness of thy mercy. In other words, I know you got to maintain your character, but just be merciful. Be merciful. I know you got to make judgment. I know that you're a God of judgment. I know you're not going to clear the guilty, but I'm asking you, can your mercy be here employed? Can your mercy be extended in this judgment that you're going to make? Because you've already made it clear. You're not putting up with these who are what? Who are talking crazy. So that means you're going to make judgment over them. But your judgment, let it be according to thy great mercy. Now when we say that, that means long suffering is going to come into play here. Because God was ready to do away with them right then, wasn't he? But see, long suffering is going to come into play. What do you mean? 
Well, God's power is limitless. Amen? Amen. So he's going to extend his power now to, re to, to cause the youth of Joshua and Caleb to be restored and extend their life. But those that were talking crazy are going to be in a place where their youth won't be sustained like Joshua and Caleb. They're going to live out the number of their days. They're going to live their life out. But Joshua and Caleb are going to seem like they're in a time capsule. They won't age like the others. They're not going to, they're not going to, they'll be all, of, they'll all be together, but God's power and mercy will be extended towards them that believe. So yeah, they live all together, but they're living a different kind of existence. See, we're in the earth, and there's stuff going on natural and supernatural. Man-made catastrophes and people doing stuff off the wall. But you, you know what? It ain't bothering us. It's not bothering us. Why? We're in the world, but we're not of the world. It's dark outside for the world. But the Israelis, those who are the Israel of God, us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have light in our houses. We've got joy in our hearts. The kingdom of God is beautiful. It's powerful. It's strong. How many of you are enjoying life? I'm living the life. I'm living the life. <laughs> life is good. Why? Because I believe God. I'm siding in with God. I'm bold for God. And when people look at you and say, how can you live like that? You just let them know. God's going to keep his word always. You need to just go ahead and walk with him. Don't be trying to fight against God. Walk with God. Trust God. Now let's read on further. Notice in verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the, cho upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Just that quick. All right, fine. But then God said, I got something else I want to tell you. Verse 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And why did God say, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord? That means the devil won't ever be able to stop or preempt or hinder the what? The glory of the Lord from being in the earth in its fullness. Now here he has reference to us. The world is talking crazy. The world is looking like he has no concern for the things of God at all. And in the world by its own wisdom is saying that they don't need God who is wise. Isn't that interesting? They want to eliminate God from all that they teach, all that is, that God has made. They don't even want to talk about having a reference to what God has provided for us in his word. So God says this, but surely as I live, saith the Lord, the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. Now why did God say that? You know why the Lord said that? Because the devil was listening to when God said, I'm going to smoke them all for talking negative. You, know, you understand what I mean by that, right? The devil could get on that key and say, well, if that's what God needs to see, people talk negative in order to just destroy his whole plan and purpose, then I'm just going to the devil. I'm, I'm, the devil said, I'm just going to go ahead and get everybody to talk as crazy as they can against the will of God. So God says this, what? As surely as I live, the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. So devil, unless you think you can come in and stop me from having love for my people, and mercy and grace and my plan going forward. I just want everybody to hear this. As surely as I live, saith the Lord, 
the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. My light will be seen in the earth, all over the earth, and nobody will be able to extinguish it or stop it. So what's going on now? What's happening is that God is bringing forth his people all over the world. All over the world. And the light of glory that is in us is shining brightly. So since we have the glory of the Lord in us, the light of God is in us, our responsibility now is to what? Allow that great light to shine brightly. I was, you know, thinking about this in between our prayer time, what we're going to start in Bible study. I'm not going to say this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to say this mighty light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This mighty light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. It's not little, it's mighty. Amen? The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. So let's rise up in our boldness in Christ Jesus. For the glory of the Lord is in us and upon us. And we're told, rise up in the boldness. And what's going to happen? God's going to move in a great and wonderful way. And when he moves in the great and wonderful way, it will be obvious that his blessings is unto us who are willing to shine brightly. So you want to know what time is it? It's time to turn on the light. It's time to shine. It's time to rise up in great confidence in the Lord. For your confidence in the Lord, your boldness in the Lord will be rewarded. Woo, glory to God. Is there opposition? Yes. The devil knows his time is short. But I'm saying to you, there's no better time for you to shine brightly and actually allow the glory of God to be seen than in the dark. When it's dark at night, the stars shine brightly. Now turn over to Ephesians. Remember I told you to turn to Ephesians, two places of scripture. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. Our light in Christ Jesus is reflective of our life that we live in Christ. So the more you live in the Lord, the more the light shines. You're shining brightly, people. Y'all living. Everybody say, I'm living. I'm living. <laughs> Another way of saying that is that I'm letting the light shine. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, in other words, Paul is saying, pray for me. Why, Paul? What do you want me to pray for? That utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, underline those words, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul is saying, when you pray for me, pray that I'm more bold. Now, some of the people would think, boy, wasn't Paul already bold? He was bold, wasn't he? But he said, pray for me, to, for me to be bolder. So you want to know how to pray for me? Pray for me to be more bold. Amen? I'll pray for you that you be more bold. He said, well, pastor, if you get really bold, you're going to have some attention drawn to you. And it, the attention will be drawn to Jesus. The light, the glory, amen? So I pray that you be more bold in Jesus' name to speak the goodness, the good news, the mystery of the gospel. So Paul the apostle say in verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 6, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak what? Boldly as I ought to speak. 
So we're not told to pray that Paul just goes and just speaks bold. But he says that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I'm not just saying anything whenever I feel like saying something, but I'm speaking what God tells me to say, and I'm not going to go beyond it. I'm not going to cut it short. I'm going to speak what God tells me to say with confidence, and I'm going to say it with no regret, and I'm going to say it knowing that it will have an effect. I'm going to speak what God tells me to say. I'm not going to pull back and, and try to modify what he tells me to say. But I'm just going to speak it clearly. Speak God's word boldly. Why? Because when we walk in boldness, turn over to Hebrews chapter 10. This mighty light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse 23. Let us hold fast. Hebrews 10 verse 23. You have it? Yes. All right. Let us hold fast the profession of of our faith without wavering for he is what faithful that promise hallelujah he is faithful that promised so that means not only am I being confident to speak what God says but I'm also speaking with this expectation God's going to back it up he's going to back it up I'm going to talk bold but I'm going to have bold results Amen? In verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and what else? And good works. Now that means talk to other believers and ask the believers about their love walk and their willingness to be bold in the Lord. And provoke them. That means prod them. Encourage them. Get on their case to be what? To be what? To be provoked to do what God's asking them to do. Because we're all in the body together. Verse 25. What should we provoke them with? Here's a provoking statement right here. A prodding statement. A poking statement. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. That means as it is the habit, as it is the lifestyle of some. What is that? Forsaking the assembling of themselves together. There are just some Christians, they not coming to church. And you need to prod them and tell them, you need to go to church. You need to be in church. You need to be in church. Why? Because in the house of God, you're going to get information. In the house of God, you'll be exhorted by the Holy Ghost and comforted and edified. And the word of God can come forth and bless your heart. He says, but exhorting one another. That means, oh, Christian who, not, who does not attend church, how are you exhorting other believers to rise up in boldness when you yourself are not exhorted? Exhorted means you're not encouraged. You can't be an encouragement to the other Christians you're able to reach. So, you know, it's kind of like your weakness is allowing other Christians to be weak. You're setting a bad example. And it's time to stop it. It's time to get in church. It's time to come together. It's time to hold fast to your confession of faith. You say you're a Christian, then be led of the Spirit of God and be in church. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now that means the Lord's coming. And where would you like to be when he comes? I sure would like to be doing what he asked me to do. Amen? I surely don't want to be doing wrong. Walking in disobedience. Now look at verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence. That word confidence is the word boldness. Amen. 
So he says, don't you throw away your confidence. That means if you have been guilty of becoming timid, if you've been guilty of being silent when you ought to have spoken, if you have been guilty of not coming to the forefront when something needed to be done and you knew how to be obedient to the Spirit of God, now he tells you, don't you throw away your boldness. Don't throw it away. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Hebrews 10, verse 35. Why does he tell you don't throw it away? Listen to this. Which hath great recompense of reward. Now, how many of you like rewards? Did you know if you catch a criminal or if you turn state's evidence on a criminal, one that is a highly sought after criminal, do you know they've got rewards for that? Some rewards are $400,000. Some rewards are fifty thousand dollars. It all depends on how bad the state wants them. But just for just making a phone call, just for being an eyewitness, just for testifying, just for showing that they look, yeah, this must be the person you're looking for. I've identified him. Now take my tip and come on and, and pick him up. Sure enough, checks out. You get a big fat check. How many of you think that's worth it? I think it's worth it. Amen? Now here, he tells you, don't throw away your boldness. Why? Because your boldness will be rewarded. Your boldness will be rewarded. See, God is looking to show himself strong. He's looking for his glory to come manifest in the midst. And so he tells you, go ahead and be bold. Step on out there and be bold. Do what I ask you to do. Why? Because I want to show up and show out. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. Be bold and be strong. For the Lord your God will never leave you. Do not be afraid. Do not be worried. Do not be ashamed, for the Lord, your God, is with you. Be bold, and let the boldness of God be rewarded in your life. Hallelujah. Some people say, I sure could use a change of life. Well, that change of life comes when you are bold and confident to stick it all out there and say, Lord, I'm going to represent you right. Now, another example of that would be David. He was a little boy, and he said, uh, what's going to happen with the person who takes out this giant? They were like, well, you won't have to pay any more taxes. The king will give you a, your house. You don't have to be debt against your house. Your house will be free. He's going to give you a house, and the king's going to give you his daughter to marry. He said, oh, that's coming to me. They said, what do you mean, you? He said, oh, that's coming to me because I'm taking out this giant. I'm taking out the giant. And so he was talking so bold, though, that his own brothers were coming to him saying, we know you're a bold individual. We know you talk big. See, they'll accuse you of talking big. But David said, what, 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 what have I done to you all? Me talking this way, what does it have to do with you? You guys were out here running away from him when he showed up. I come out here getting ready to run to him. Why are you mad at me? Because when you're bold, the rewards are coming. See, David got his motivation. He got his motivation from what? Tell me about those rewards again. Tell me about them benefits again. Tell me about them goodies again. And he started thinking about the rewards and the goodies and the benefits and the most important thing is that what he wanted God to be seen in the proper light the biggest thing is he wanted God to be seen in the proper light some people are just talking crazy using curse words telling you all kind of lies against God that type of thing and you just got to say look I'm shutting you down right now God is not confused and God is not going to go back on what he said. Some people think that it was Abraham's request when he talked against, you know, destroying the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. If there were so many righteous people in there, he said, God, I know you're not going to destroy the righteous with the wicked. But do you know something? 
Abraham wasn't even thinking about Sodom and Gomorrah until God came to him and said, hey, look, I'm getting ready to do something and I'm going to include you in on it. I'm going to inform you of it. Now, he didn't come to Abraham and say, do you think I should destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? He said, I'm getting ready to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and I just want to let you know what I'm getting ready to do. Be my man. And he listened to Abraham. And when God was getting ready to smoke the children of Israel, he said, I'm going to talk to you, Moses. Moses, what do you want to say? Moses said, you know, you've got a reputation for being good, long-suffering and merciful. God said, you're right. Now, I'm going to make judgment still, but I'm going to listen to you. And I'm going to work according to what I've said, and you're reminding me of it. Don't you know God wants you to talk to him? Some people have done some things and they're like, well, you know, why don't you get mad and angry? I don't get mad and angry because if I do, God will get upset. And I don't want him to cut up on you. So what I'll do is I'll just say, oh, uh, let me talk to daddy. That, 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 can we talk about? It? Now, that doesn't mean he's not going to make judgment. There was somebody that was real wild and they were talking crazy. And my wife even was like, what are you going to do? Are you going to let him talk like that? I'm like, it's not me who I am. Af yeah. you, they shouldn't be afraid of me. It's the God who I serve that they need to be afraid of. Because if I express a real concern, I'm telling you, I feel like, and when I say feeling, but I have the position and the impression and I, have, I see myself in this light. I'm like Jesus. I could call and angels will come handle this right now. So what I need to do is be real watchful as to how I address this. Because daddy don't want to see me upset. My wife said, well, if you didn't do anything about that and such and such, such person, as if to say you didn't handle it right then and there. I said, I did. Well, you didn't do anything then. I said, but yeah, but where are they now? See, I'd rather, I'd rather do what? I'd rather just check myself, make sure I'm not in, in strife, make sure I'm not in any bitterness, make sure I'm not trying to be revengeful because all of sin that comes short of the glory of God, amen? It's just better to go ahead and let the mercy and the love of God take care of things. But I do know how to stand up. I do know how to stop the devil. I do know how to what? I know how to not be taken in strife. Why? Because if you're taken in strife, the devil can get you at his will. Did y'all know that? You better leave strife alone. Talk about, well, let me get even. Oh, you, excuse me? Uh, I'll show you this. You're there in Hebrews, aren't you? You're in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. Great recompense of reward means your confidence is going to be rewarded. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Then turn over to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. I'm telling you, the world is going to cut up even more so. There's going to be people talking all kind of wild stuff. And thinking that they can do, do disrespect and harm to the people of God and, and do disrespect and harm to God. But that's not going to be the case. Look at Hebrews 13 verse 6. Oh, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may what? Boldly so that we may what? Boldly. boldly say. Underline circle the word boldly. So that we may boldly say or confidently say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear. What shall man do unto me? I will not fear. What shall man do unto me? If God is for you, who then can be against you? 
God is on your side if you're on his side in the word. Amen. Amen. Now turn over to Timothy. Let's look at that. Paul talking to Timothy and he lets him know, Timothy, don't you walk in strife. Stay away from it. Turn over to 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. Don't you get into strife. Don't you try to exact judgment on your own. Do you understand? Yes. See, when you're conscious that God is with you, it should affect the way you approach things. Instead of you trying to, mm, let me show you what you can't do to me. Uh -uh, no, 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 it's bigger than that. Daddy is my father God is my daddy. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 2. Look at this. In verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. That means they'll go and try to argue with a nutcase. It's not good for them to argue with you. Why? Because the more they talk crazy, the more they're going to be what? Put in the position of judgment. So it's better for me not to talk to you than for me to get in your face and try to confront you on your idiocy. So if I see a fool, what do I do? I'll avoid them. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be what? Gentle unto all men, apt or able to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And they that and that they may recover themselves out of the what? Snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Don't you get in strife? Yeah. Getting in strife puts you on the devil's territory. Yeah. You don't go argue with a fool. Yeah. A fool is a fool. Yeah. The best way to handle a fool is to do right. <laughs> Just do right. Be blessed. Keep on being blessed. Keep shining in the light. Keep walking in the blessings of the Lord. What was the best way for David to show his brothers that he wasn't just, they used to have an old phrase statement, selling wolf tickets, blowing hard, just talking. David went out there and backed up his words. Goliath came against little David and said, you trying to come beat me with a, with, with a, a slingshot and some stones? What are you, little shepherd boy? Are you kidding me? I'm going to feed your bodies to the gods. David said, you got it wrong, man. I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Today, your head's coming off and the, the fowl of the air are going to eat your body. And Goliath went walking toward him. And the Bible says, and David ran toward him. Why? His boldness is going to be rewarded. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. And I have to quit because I run out of time. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bold, bold, boldness, confidence. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Will you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy. But you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, 
Thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father, and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spirit Food Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www myspiritfood.com Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30am and be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.